Hello students. The purpose of this video is to give you a tour of the optical pumping apparatus. Everything you see in front of you here is all the hardware required to do optical pumping and in the next video I'll show you the electronic control box that controls all the equipment. So let me just start then on the left end of the optical rail here. I'll point out each component and tell you briefly what it does. <clears throat> so this first blue box here, this is a rubidium lamp. It has both isotopes of rubidium in it and when turned on emits a reddish glow of infrared radiation at both 780 and about 797 nanometers. This is the primary light source that will drive the whole experiment and the idea is that light from this box here will one way or the other travel all the way down the optical rail to the very end here to this photo detector. The photo detector gives a voltage that's proportional to the light intensity that hits it and so one way or the other the light that leaves the lamp will make it down to the photo detector but the key experimental signal is going to be just how much light that leaves the lamp ends up making it down to the detector. And what would change that? Well, all of the physics and the optics and things that occurs between the lamp and the photo detector. So optical pumping is very much about what physics happens inside of this chamber here that could possibly modulate the light coming out of the lamp that ends up making it to the detector. Because the lamp, when it's on and warmed up, just emits a constant intensity of radiation, so any modulation that we see at the photo detector must be coming from physics happening inside there. I'll talk about that in a second. So, anyway, that's the light source right here, the lamp light coming out. The first thing we do is we put it through a pretty tight focal length lens to focus it a bit more so we don't lose too much light out into the room. We want to tr try to contain the light on the optical rail as much as possible. That's what the lens is for. The next element is a filter. This is an optical filter here that filters away the 780 nanometer light and only allows the 797 nanometer light to pass through the system. So by the time the light reaches this region right here, traveling leftward down the optical rail, only one wavelength is present, the 797 nanometers. The very next element here is a polarizer. What it does, it takes the otherwise unpolarized light from the lamp and, and polarizes it along only one direction. So this polarizer has a single transmission axis Let's just say for the sake of this conversation, the transmission axis is say parallel to this knob right here. And so what that means is only electric fields that are polarized parallel to this knob, which is to say vertically polarized, up and down, maybe oscillating up and down like this, are the only light polarization that, that are allowed to pass this way down the optical rail. So a polarizer is the next element. Lamp, lens, filter, polarizer. The next element you see here is a quarter wave plate. Now what a quarter wave plate does is it takes that now polarized light from the polarizer and circularly polarizes it. So light that is passing from this area, from this optical element downwards, leftwards in the optical rail, is now circularly polarized. That literally means that as the light travels down this axis, let's call this the z-axis, the electric field vector is circulating around the z-axis as it travels. You can do a quick Google search or something for circularly polarized light and see exactly what we're talking about. But suffice to say, as we said, the electric field is now circulating around its propagation axis. In this region right here, inside this white canister, here, this is a sort of a thermally controlled environment. This is packing foam or styrofoam in here because what's buried inside the styrofoam is a small glass cell containing both isotopes of rubidium, both rubidium-85 and rubidium-87. It's in here and it's heated to about 50 degrees Celsius because Rubidium is somewhat solid at room temperature, so we want to heat it a little bit more to about 50 degrees to ensure that it's a nice, in a nice vapor state inside the glass cell that's deep, deep inside this insulated piece of plastic here. And that's our primary sample that the light will interact with, the rubidium atoms, both isotopes inside that glass cell. So light, and, and there's apertures on both sides of this box here for the light from the lamp to travel through. So the light just continues its path. This way down the optical rail can travel through everything and makes it to this last lens here, which takes light coming out of the rubidium cell and focuses it as much as possible into the photo detector for detection. Because as we said earlier, the photo detector is your key signal in this lab. The amount of light intensity that ends up making it to this detector is what it forms our key signal. I'll talk about these coils in just a second here. There's three coils, one, two, three. I'll talk about them in just a minute in the next video. But that, in, that is sort of part one of the optical pumping apparatus, a lamp, a lens, a filter, a polarizer, quarter wave plate, the rubidium vapor sample, a focusing lens, and a light detector.